So it's a um, a fun one to talk about. I don't know if any of you have been to any of the Mediterranean countries. Hopefully, we'll get some time to talk about it at the end. So really appreciate you being here again. Okay, so just um, moving on here. So if you don't, if you have trouble seeing anything or if you have questions or comments you would like to um, talk to me about, you can go into the chat box. And so if you don't see the chat box, it should be right at the bottom of your screen and you can hover over it and it'll kind of show up if it doesn't um, sometimes mine goes to the top, so just kind of looking for that and then you can press that and you can um, type into the chat and you can send the message to everybody or just to one person. So um, I'd love it if you have any questions or comments to just type them in there, that'd be great. And then after the presentation, I have a short evaluation and so I'll send that out to you following the webinar and I really appreciate your feedback. So it's really helpful because I'm um, you know, usually I do these classes face-to-face -face and just learning even um, what things are better and what you need more of when we're online and things like that can be really helpful. And what maybe I should talk more about or less about. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you for doing that in advance. Okay, so what we will cover today, we'll define the Mediterranean diet and talk about its health benefits and then the foods that you can include and how you could make it work for you. So that is really important then to try to figure out, you know, once we're here talking about the Mediterranean diet, how could you actually apply this then? Um, because I, you know, you might want to. And then it's like um, just some looking at some different things that maybe you could um, have as a sample Mediterranean meal. Okay. So the Mediterranean diet, it's a food pattern that's shared by countries that rim the Mediterranean Sea, okay? So it's these countries right here. So it's sometimes, you know, we just think about um, Mediterranean diet, you think of Italy and Greece, and you're kind of like, okay, well, is that it? Um, but no, you have all those that rim the Mediterranean Sea, and they all kind of have those things in common, the characteristics of that diet. And so just looking at ones like Lebanon, you might think of, or Israel, Turkey, Egypt is even there, just any of that North Africa, Morocco. So those are all considered um, Mediterranean places. So it's a healthy way to eat and, you know, to live for the rest of your life. And so that's one of the reasons I love like presenting about this is because you know, there are a thousand different diets out there and this is more of a lifestyle and like a way of life instead of just something, okay, I'm gonna do this for a week or a month and you know, see if I can make it through. So it's kind of about changing stuff and then just kind of enjoying life this way um, because that's where you get all the benefits and you will enjoy it too. You know, it's not, it's not a diet like that. And so um, just, uh, Fun fact, I guess, U.S. News and World Report, they put out um, like the best diets every year. And so what they look at are, you know, the evidence, the science behind them, like what's the, what is considered, you know, reputable, what could help with different conditions, what the research is behind it. And then also if it's something that's easy for people to follow, because some of the diets out there, you know, it's very restrictive or you can't get any of the ingredients. Um, and so this, um, they were looking at everything, but also really, you know, the evidence behind it. And so in 2019, this one was um, tied with number one with the DASH diet, which is another great diet if you haven't heard of it. Um, but in 2019 and 2020, it was ranked the overall best. And so then they break them down by different categories and different, like if you're wanting weight loss, what is the best of the best? But this one is the overall best. And so, um, you know, if you can take away just even one thing from this, um, hopefully, you know, that can really help. Okay, so just there's many health benefits. So here's kind of why, maybe I can convince you to go this way. Just scientific evidence shows that it, the diet can help um, reach weight loss and management goals, lower your risk of heart disease, um, blood pressure, fight certain cancers, and then other diseases, and reduce the risk of diabetes, manage blood pressure, blood sugar, and prevent cognitive decline. So those are all 
you know, very important thing. So for those of you who live in Polk County, um, I don't know, um, number one cause of death, right? Does anybody know what it is? If you wanna, if you have time to type it in the chat box there, if you wanna take a guess. Yep, you're right. Heart disease is definitely by far number one. And number two is cancer and three, chronic lower respiratory disease, and four is stroke in our county, in Polk County. And so these are all nutrition-related lifestyle things that we could help, um, you know, just this diet would help reduce all of those. So then um, number five for us is unintentional injury, things like car accidents and things like that. So, um, you know, it might not help as much with that, but it's got the first four, okay? Okay. So then uh, we used to have a pyramid for um, just in America, the dietary guidelines, and we've moved away from this, but the Mediterranean diet pyramid is just something, you know, it can kind of help us see which foods might be considered the best of the best, right? So it's kind of cool. It's like the bottom, you know, instead of having things like fruits or vegetables on there, it has people, you know, just it's a lifestyle thing, you know? It's people interacting with each other and just enjoying life and enjoying sitting down and having a meal. And, you know, even like, especially now, right? Um, but just, you know, enjoying the food and just taking walks and being active throughout your day. Um, these are kind of the, ba that's the basics of the, of the Mediterranean diet. So right above that then is where we have all the fruits and the vegetables, like all those plant foods then. It's like the beans, the nuts, the seeds, like anything that comes from the ground is right there. So it's a lot of um, plant-based eating. So if you can think about those things, you know, that's your base. And then after that, you've got the fish and the seafood. So, you know, top it off with a little of that. And then you have the dairy and the chicken. And then above on the way top is the sweets and the meats. Okay, so this is, um, kind of the basics and we'll talk through all of that then. Okay, so it decreases risk of heart disease and stroke. So that's our number one killer. And so you might wonder, you know, okay, so how is this gonna help me? So this lifestyle, you know, it really emphasizes whole grains and whole foods versus processed and less red meat. And so this way of eating um, has really helped to support um, lower risk of heart disease and stroke. So that's why it's been found to really help with those things. And then red wine is encouraged rather than hard liquor. But, you know, I was just doing some research before this presentation. I can talk more, but just, you know, it might not even have to be red wine. You know, it's just um, any small amount of alcohol can reduce risk of heart disease. So that's interesting. Um, and then it decreases risk and reduces complications of diabetes. So you might wonder, well, how's it going to do that? And so it's really rich in fiber. And so fiber can help slow down the blood sugar response, which can be really helpful for people who are trying to manage your blood sugar because you want to keep the swings down. And so just it has a lot of fruit and vegetables and legumes, seeds and nuts. So fiber is only found in plant foods. So you don't get any fiber from meats or dairy products. So just, you know, this basics here are the plant foods. And so just really can help with the diabetes then, helping slow that blood sugar and lots of other benefits just for eating healthy in general. Okay, and then Alzheimer's disease too. So it's, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of evidence about this and I'm always hearing more just that it may help you know, we don't really exactly know why it's helping, but it like, you know, it can improve the cholesterol levels as well as your blood sugar, which is, um, we know, harmful. And so it's like the blood vessels, you know, they're running all over us and there's ones that go to your brain too. So it makes sense that the healthier the blood vessels are, the healthier, you know, your mind will be also. And so this is really helping, you know, keep those clear by the way you're eating and your lifestyle, okay? So those are all positive benefits, so I'm still convincing you, but um, anti-inflammatory reflect, right? So some inflammation is good. So it's like if you get a cut, um, then a lot of these um, fighters will come and help try to help that cut. And so when, um, 
when that starts happening where kind of, you know, like your body's kind of trying to fight something, something's going on inside of you and it can't um, heal it, you know, like how we could heal a cut, but it's kind of um, a chronic thing. It's going on all the time because it's trying to heal, trying to heal. And then, so the cells will die, but then they'll, you know, they're just trying to keep um, making it better. This is a chronic condition then. So like many diseases are listed linked to that. So cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis. So if you have any of those, um, they consider you know, considered to have chronic inflammation. So depression can be that, Alzheimer's. So inflammation causes heat, redness, swelling, and pain in the affected part of the body. And so that's a normal immune re system response. So that's what I'm kind of trying to t say, you know, it's just important for healing, but if it becomes long-term, then it's linked to all these conditions. So it's like the arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and heart disease. So we know that some foods make it better and some foods make it like kind of, um, I guess, do not make it better. So. Um, you want to try to do more of those foods that can fight it. And that's where the fatty fish, olive oil, nuts, tomatoes, so all these things with the diet then. And so I have um, kind of a, just a small graphic there that I found from Harvard, but it's just showing the different fighters and then the ones that, you know, can increase the inflammation. So they've actually found that people, you know, who eat more of those anti-inflammatory foods, they have less pain, less arthritis pain, like rheumatoid arthritis, I think, is one of the bigger ones that they've found. But just really trying to eat more of those things can help um, help those things. And, you know, anybody you know who's in pain, you know, it definitely can hurt. There's no risks of the things above that, um, those anti-inflammatory foods. So that's, that's really another benefit of this diet is that there's no... Um, you know, like these are all foods that, um, you know, you can't go wrong, including. Okay, so then just the principles of the diet. So just to kind of get back, you know, just to what we're looking at here. So it's about eating what is freshest and available locally. So it's the quality and not the quantity. And you're really enjoying every bite and it's kind of like that bottom of the pyramid where the people are just, you know, they're just enjoying their food, you know, not just, you know, just really, I guess, enjoying what every, every bite is. And you're using fresh and whole, not processed so fine, you know. So it's uh, right now, you know, in America, we've gone a lot back to more processed foods just because it's kind of um, can be considered comforting foods. But it's funny because, you know, the fruits and the vegetables can actually, they've found studies that they help your mood. So the more people who ate fruits and vegetables, they had better like mood, less depression. And so these things are, you know, it's so, you know, not what you're drawn to, but if you can kind of remember those things and try to drive yourself for them, towards them, those will really help you. And then try to eat primary plant-based. So things that come from the ground. So if it grows from the ground, you know, that would be one you'd want to stick with more. And then regular physical activity. Okay, so it focuses on the healthy fats. So the unsaturated fats would be the ones, ways to go. So if anybody um, has a chance to quick type in the chat box um, what you would consider um, an example of an unsaturated fat, I would, I would love that um, just to kind of see where you guys are at. Doing know? Yeah, avocado is definitely a good one. Olive oil and nuts, yes, for sure. And there's one big one with omega 3s, which you guys might know. We'll talk about if you don't. Salmon, yeah, very fish. Yes, grapeseed oil too, and tuna, especially the albacore one because that has a little more of that fat. So you guys have, yeah, very good answers. So then the unsaturated fat, those are the polyunsaturated and the monounsaturated. So there's only, you know, a limited amount of different fats there are, but there's, you know, they're divided up into these three categories. So they're either unsaturated, saturated, or they're trans fats, okay? So we know for sure trans fats really, really, really bad for us. 
So they've actually outlawed it out of the food supply. And so all the people who have been making foods with it in there have, have to take it out. Um, so we have to, you know, kind of, um, I guess, be grateful of that. <laughs> um, but we still have these other ones, right? So just trying to figure out, you know, which one should I have? So the fattier fish, so that's like things like the salmon, catfish, I have it up there, mackerel, trout. Those are um, tend to be fattier ones. So also like sardines or, um, yeah, I think of mackerel, but anchovies would be another one. And then um, the walnuts, avocados that you guys talked about. And just trying to think of, you know, if you could have at least two servings of fish a week. And so I know just even... Um, sometimes my family at home, you know, that, um, they really like fish, but they might not have it as often, you know, as maybe they could. So just trying to really make it a habit like, okay, so we usually have, you know, whatever today, maybe we could sub fish in there, just trying to do something like that. And then doing just less of the saturated fat, um, which is tend to be more, um, what they found is it can read list to uh, link to higher rates of heart disease. And so we're learning more that some saturated might be acting different than other ones, but the research still, you know, we're still trying to like back it for sure a hundred percent. So just really trying to go for the unsaturated ones, you know, we know they have a lot of benefits and then trying to just kind of limit the other ones, especially when they're found, the saturated ones, they're often found with things like sugar. So yeah, um, we know that would also be something we kind of want to do a little less of. Okay, a little less of, a lot less of. So features of the diet. So this is kind of the fun part. So it's kind of like, what are you guys having for dinner tonight? So the fresh vegetables and fruits are predominant. So that's uh, what should dominate your plate. So just trying to think about what fruits you like or what vegetables you like and seeing how you can get those on your plate more. And then maybe branching out to a different one because each of the fruits and vegetables, each of them has different benefits. That's why they're different colors or different shapes, you know, different textures, but they each made up of different things. We're finding out more all the time about that. So just some, here's some examples. And, you know, some that are listed are just more common kind of in the Mediterranean area. Um, especially the like the eggplant, but you can do a lot with things like that, you know, just because it's so, um, I guess eggplant doesn't have a lot of flavor by itself, so you can cook it and you can add a lot of things with it, and so um, that would be a great one, and it's used a lot, but also just carrots and the greens and mushrooms, onions, yeah, I, zucchini and broccoli. I got to go to Morocco, and they'd have tagines, so they're, um, kind of like a plate of food that they would bring out then, but just it's filled with different vegetables and just, you know, they use pumpkins and squash and zucchinis and you put it all together with like something like tomatoes and you cook it in this dish and just, you know, that, just that kind of eating, you know, like a huge vegetable, you know, plate would be kind of something great, you know, if we can do more things like that. Okay, so then fruit too, just each of these different colors does something different for you. So that's why, you know, sometimes like you can get in a rut sometimes and just eat a certain thing. But if you can eat with the seasons, that can really help you. Because if you think about it, um, each of the things kind of has its seasons and then you'll at least get, you know, something of everything throughout the year. Um, but just really trying to mix it up and, you know, ask yourself, am I getting different colors too? But um, choosing fruits can be very helpful. And then, you know, using the whole fruit instead of the juice is huge. So um, why would you want to use the whole fruit instead of the juice? Um, what do you guys think? You want to quick type it in? Do you have time? Yeah. Or like the fiber. Yes, so the fiber helps you feel full, right? And it's helping, you know, with the blood sugar and things like that. And it can help with weight loss. And so just, we know that's really good. And there's also some things that are, you know, in different fruits and vegetables that don't get into the juice, you know, other than even the fiber. So just kind of remembering that and just really trying to have the whole thing when you can, okay? Okay, so then it, including plant proteins and beans and lentils. So this one, I, 
I think just really fun, just fun fact. Um, so in America, 50% of the, the beans that we have, that we eat, are pinto beans, right? And so just kind of interesting, you know, isn't it? But just the number one state for growing beans right now is North Dakota. And so they grow 40% of our beans. And I don't know, sometimes people try to like, you know, avoid beans, you know, kind of there's, um, you know, some effects of the having the beans, right? But they found that the, um, if you cook them from dry, right? And you do the quick boil method. So there's an overnight soak method and then there's a quick boil method for cooking beans that take a long time. So if you do the quick boil method, it decreases the gas more, okay? so. Um, that's like you're taking the dry beans, you cook it for a minute, and then you shut it off and cook it to a boil, I guess I should say, and then you shut it off and leave it for at least an hour and then you cook them. And so what you do then is you drain off the water in between. So rinsing the beans really helps produce those gas forming compounds that are, you know, just a little bit hard on your stomach sometimes. And so the more that you rinse them then, um, the better off, you know, you'll be to a point, obviously. <laughs> but just kind of, you know, changing the water in between time. And, you know, if you get the can also, you know, there's a benefit to reducing the sodium by rinsing, but you can also take out some of the things. And if you have um, problems digesting, one um, fun fact is that lentils are easier to digest than other beans. So um, that can be a good one too. And pinto also, I believe, are easier on the stomach so it's kind of nice that way but you know just increasing your intake gradually um can definitely help also so okay so see, here's just some different benefits but remembering the seeds too because they're really good for snacks and things like that um but just all the different kinds and so walnuts are the ones that we consider really high in omega-3s but things like almonds, they have a lot of calcium. So just like we were talking about with fruits, each of the different seeds has benefits too. And I was looking, um, you know, into it one time, but you know, even poppy seeds, they're, they have some really good benefits. So it's funny, isn't it? Just sometimes things you don't think about, but just each of them has kind of different minerals or vitamins that it's really good for. And I think the ones in the dietitian world anyway that we hear the most about the benefits would be like walnuts almonds i'm also hearing a lot about pistachios and definitely peanuts too right um chia flax i guess all those um but they found like you know even if you love cashews there are different things that are higher in cashews and macadamia that macadamia have the most fat um but they have some other things that other ones don't have and brazil nuts um they have more selenium than any other food. So just, you know, having one of those a day, you know, can get all the selenium you need, which it, they've found is really, really good for multiple things. So just trying to, you know, have different kinds of nuts too, just like you do with the, just like what you do with the fruits and vegetables. Okay, so eating seafood twice a week, this can be really good. So just what we talked about then. So these are some examples. So the ones that are higher um, or that could be considered really good would be that salmon and the sardines and anchovies. Those are high in omega-3s, but all these other ones are really good too. And trout is high also in omega-3s, just really helping with um, longevity and looking like a lot of other things too. And so it's interesting in Israel, um, there was a lady who was in one of my presentations and she um, came up to me afterwards and you know she just said she went to Israel and on their breakfast buffet every morning the hotel served olives and fish so it's kind of fun um, you know just different parts of the world you can really eat whatever you want at whatever meal there's nothing nothing you have to do um, special so and then enjoying some dairy products so this is not um, Kind of in America, sometimes we go for the like, oh, the four cheese pizza or something like that. So, so this is more using cheese as a garnish then. And usually in yogurt or um, cheeses that have been aged or um, have a lot of flavor. So it's more of, um, I guess, I have some examples here. I'm kind of trying to think, but just like the Romano, the Parmesan, they are, there's a lot of flavor and just a little bit of cheese there. And so using those, 
as a garnish. And I don't know, has anyone, um, you can put in the chat box, oh, hemp seeds, yeah. I just saw that she'd put that too. Um, so just halloumi cheese, it's a grilling cheese. So it's kind of cool that you can actually, it's the one cheese that you can grill. So just there's some different fun cheeses too. All right, so then um, focusing on the good fats. So I'm really trying to drive home the same thing. So maybe you guys can uh, we'll remember it one way versus another, but just, you know, using extra virgin olive oil, or just olive oil is one that's predominant in this diet. And then the nuts and the seeds, which have the healthy fats and avocados, peanuts, and more. So just um, looking at the healthy fats, then, you know, just remembering even peanut butter has healthy fats too. So um, that would be a, a positive choice. And so um, these are some things with that healthy fat then. So I talked about olive oil, but, um, you know, other ones are definitely beneficial also. And, you know, just some notes about olive oil. Sometimes people ask me, you know, well, which one, you know, there's so many in the store. There are only certain ones that have the benefits or what about the virgin versus the extra, like just the normal olive oil, you know, and should I go by price? And so one thing I've really learned is price, you know, does not tell you. So the things you really want to look for, um, I guess if you can, you know, a lot of times people say like the best of the best of the olive people, you know, it just, it's hard to find the best olive oil in the grocery store. So if you can get to one where you can actually taste the oil and try different ones, you know, because they each have different flavors. And I actually went to a conference just a, a little bit ago, right before this, and there was um, a lady who was a taster of olive oil they call her a super taster because there's only a certain amount of people who can taste all these different things and different foods and so she's considered a super taster and companies hire her to write descriptions about their oil and so she was talking to us about just you know how we could we tried a bunch of different olive oils but they really do have different flavors and so the things that are um you know bad for you for the olive oil so if you're buying olive oil you want to try to look for dark glass containers, right? Um, because the light deteriorates them. And then also, you know, when you get them at home, you don't want to buy the heat at all because heat is another deterrent. So just trying to remember those things and then buying smaller bottles because you want fresh is the best. So if you look at the, the olive oil, you want to try to look for the harvest date if you can, because that's how you know that when the olives were harvested, and then you can kind of take it from there, right? Um, you know, the best by dates help, but you still don't really know, you know, how long has it been since they were harvested. And so if you can look for that, that would be great. And just not storing it by the heat. And so sometimes people ask, you know, you know, kind of sheepishly, you know, they're trying to get away from the frying foods, but could you fry with olive oil? And the answer is yes. You just would not want to use an extra virgin olive oil. And you can also, um, so I guess the difference is, you know, a small point of this normal olive oil is 410. So, you know, that's pretty high, but if you're going with like something like extra virgin, you know, it's a lot lower, so 325. So the difference is the extra virgin olive oil is cold pressed. So you get the most benefits from that. So that's why you hear the most about that. And so there hasn't been heat used. So it's just taking the olives and the water. Um, so olives, once you make them, um, they separate into the olive solids, olive water, and olive oil. And so they quickly, you know, once they do, um, once they smash them, then they remove the water so that it won't get, you know, near the oil. And then eventually the oil is bottled. But there's no, you know, right away like that they don't use heat. And so the heat, it produces more oil so that, you know, it might be cheaper than to make um, just olive oil. But if it's extra virgin, it's that cold press. So that's why you get more of those polyphenols, which are very good for your heart. So, you know, you can use definitely, there's a, um, a use for both of the oils though. Like the extra virgin would be great for drizzling on things. And, you know, that's the one where you, you know, you could dip bread in there, um, something like that. And then just normal olive oil, that would be the one you'd want to use for baking because the extra virgin one, 
um, not only does it have, you know, those higher nutrients, but it has a lot more flavor, right? So sometimes, you know, in a baking, a baked product, you want things that, you know, you just want a neutral tasting oil. And so you can definitely use oil, olive oil for baking. It's just, you'd want to try to choose one that can go to the higher heat then, and that might be a neutral tasting one. All right. So that's a lot about olive oil, maybe more than you guys wanted to know. But uh, one more thing, just you can sub it for butter. So if you usually have butter in your uh, pastry, your pie or something like that, you can actually use olive oil. You just need less, um, slightly less. So like for every, I guess, you know, teaspoon of butter that you would use, it's three fourths teaspoon olive oil. So you see kind of what I mean? And there's definitely things you can find online. So one cup of butter, three fourths cup olive oil. All right, so moving on. So just here's some pictures so you can kind of see how maybe this could be done then. And so just taking kind of, here's our one in America, right, on the left side, and then you could remake it into something like the one on the right side. So it's um, kind of cool, you know, just looking at the difference that you can see and looking at, I guess, specifically for this one, just even the saturated fat and the total fat, um, looking at how they decrease once you um, kind of change the way you eat just a little bit. That can be really, really great for your heart. Then adding more fiber, really good. So, you know, switching to whole grains too, just trying to have those because not only do the whole grains help you feel full, but there's a ton of benefits behind them for reducing diabetes and helping with your weight and helping with um, blood sugar. Just, you know, they're less processed also. So just trying to get all those benefits of those whole grains is great. So here's just some examples. So trying to choose the whole wheat version of these. So there's things out there, you know, like you might have heard of quinoa, right? So that's a whole, whole grain. Um, and then there's amaranth and the farro, right? Um, trying to think of just some other ones, just, you know, even brown rice, popcorn is a whole grain. If you think about it, it's that whole grain of popcorn um, that you, you know, you're popping. So those are, that's another option, but just trying to choose the whole, like whole wheat, whole, you know, just oats. Um, all the oats are um, whole grains, so. That's a benefit also, just when you can have that versus um, something like grits. And so grits are usually refined. So trying to choose the whole grain cornmeal when you can. Okay, so then we're changing the way you think about meat too. So just um, that would be something, you know, you're enjoying it as a garnish instead of the main event. So I have a good picture of that, I think, um, here. You might think of, you know, our traditional steak and potatoes, right? Um, but just looking at, um, you know, how you can still have a bunch of flavor, but really help your health. And just look at the difference in the calories. You could eat three of the meals on the, now even four of the meals on the right side um, to equal the amount of calories in the left side. So just really trying to think about, you know, maybe I could do this a little bit differently. Just really trying to get vegetables and fruits at the center of the plate and then using all the other things. Um, for flavors. Okay, and then here's the once in a while foods, right? So that would be that red meat and just trying to choose the lean sources of protein instead and beans, uh, seafoods, eggs, and nuts and poultry. Okay, and so eggs, you know, people ask me about those two and they're definitely in the Mediterranean diet um, and they do have some benefits. Um, you, we don't hear about them as much, you know, beans are really beans and nuts and seeds where we get our protein predominant, but they're up there right kind of by the lean chicken. So both, both of those are great options. And then using herbs and spices to flavor your food. So, you know, like instead of salt, you know, herbs and spices, like I do a whole different class just on the benefits of those. You know, like each, somebody said to me once, you know, um, each of the different herbs um, and spices, it's just like having a separate salad. You know, they each have a bunch of benefits just packed into like a little bit of a, a little bit of something, you know? And so each of those things really has some great benefits too. So just really using the herbs and spices. And it's interesting. I went to Morocco and on the table, you know, we have salt and black pepper. And so they actually had, um, they still had salt, but they had cumin. 
And so it's just really, you know, you can really use different flavors just a lot more than maybe we normally do. So um, just trying to have maybe a little bit less salt and trying to work up the herbs um, and spices. So even black pepper has some really great benefits. It helps you absorb different nutrients. So can't go wrong with that either. Okay. Oh yeah, Zatar, she wrote in. Okay. So making water your go-to drink, that is a huge one. You know, so trying to stay away from the sweetened beverages when you can, but just, you know, tea works too. Coffee, just not adding the sugar. So you guys can do it. Um, you know, putting fruit right in your water can be delicious and refreshing, especially now. Um, and then having wine, right? So, you know, I was just looking, the, like I was talking to you guys about earlier, but just the true benefit, it's likely not from, you know, we're, we think a lot about the red wine, but it's looking like other different wines and even, you know, beer and other alcohol can really help your heart. So it just, we do know um that maybe moderate drinking can help with a number of things but um for women it's looking like you know any alcohol at all can increase your risk of breast cancer so kind of the recommendation is you know if you don't drink now maybe don't start um but if you do drink you know just try to really make sure to have it in moderation and then kind of discussing it with your doctor because you know each person is different on how they react to alcohol also um and so we also have unique you know personal and family histories so just kind of different spectrum of benefits and risk but i just wanted to say you know <laughs> gotta love the wine with you know i think we always think about that but you know just moderate can really help your heart so that's why it's on here okay so then just here's looking at um i just wanted to post a couple other pictures and so just you know here could be the typical american breakfast so I actually went to Greece and on the menu, so they would have it in Greek and they'd have the American menu, but on the, <laughs> on the American menu, they would just put American breakfast. And then what they considered our breakfast was the one on the left. It was like either bacon or sausage, like white bread and like eggs. And so it's just interesting, you know, how we're, you know, that's American. And then they would have like the Greek one. And so they'd have like fish or, you know, something like that. Um, but here's just an example of a Spanish frittata. So it's taking those eggs then and adding a bunch of different vegetables. And then they're having avocado toast. So, you know, toast with avocados instead of butter. And then having some fresh fruit just um, can be a lot better for you. So, all right. So here's another one. Um, so we might take our typical um, turkey and cheese sandwich and you could try something like a walnut, walnut hummus pita pocket. So it's really interesting what you can do with nuts. And I love being able to do food demonstrations in the classes where you can show different things like this, but just even taking something like walnuts, you know, and roasting them, there's recipes for walnuts and tacos that use like things like cauliflower as the meat. And you kind of, uh, mushrooms too, can take on that ground beef uh, flavor. So just kind of cooking them, um, you know, can really help replace some of the meat. And so um, there's recipes out there for walnut chorizo. So if you like chorizo sausage or something like that, you can look that up. But just doing different things like that or, you know, having a veggie burger or a half veggie, half meat burger it could be an option or a half bean. And so here are some swaps just to give you some ideas. So these are like tangible takeaways, right? Um, so instead of mayonnaise on your sandwich, you could use something like hummus, right? Okay, to give you great flavor, you could spread um, avocados on there or um, I'm trying to think of, you know, there's all those different kinds of hummus now too. So you could really have a lot of fun, you know, make the turkey sandwich just a little bit, um, a little bit better for you. And then butter on your toes, the, the same kind of thing, you know, you know, once you find like an olive oil, if you can get one of those good tasting ones, you know, if you could just think about, you know, if you're having a, a roll with your meal, you know, maybe, you know, using like olive oil actually as your butter per se, right? Or even something like peanut butter um, can help you more than maybe butter would. So the meat and pasta sauce, using more vegetables instead, and then taking something like um, a sweet dessert and, you know, thinking about how could I make like a fruit out of that? 
or I have um, some really good recipes for some chickpea cookies. And so just, you know, using a little bit of dark, dark chocolate and you mash up chickpeas um, and blend them with like, you know, maybe some nut butter um, and baking them it can be really delicious dessert. Or um, just using something like bananas as ice cream. I don't know if anybody's done that, but they are great. And so using those kind of things. So here's just kind of Mediterranean dinner formula. So if you're thinking about what to have for dinner tonight, right? So thinking about maybe a serving of fish, a serving of whole grains, and then two starchy non-servings of non-starchy vegetables. So you can hold up your hand, and that could be like a serving of the fish, um, and then one serving of the, your hand of the whole grains, and then double up on those vegetables, really trying to get a lot of those. So um, give some of the examples there. And then a snack formula might be a serving of fruit and a serving of nuts and then or some cheese something like that could be a great snack so just thinking about trying to make fruits and vegetables core part of your meal and so um just kind of wanted you to think maybe um brainstorming your meal then um so these are i've been fortunate not enough to get to go to like greece and morocco and i've been to italy um, but people have told me about their trips to things, places like egypt and one lady, she said they, she was on a cruise like on the Nile and they served a banana every night for dessert. That was like their traditional dessert and fava beans every morning for breakfast. So it's kind of, it's fun what you, the different countries do, but you can see how they could have a lot of benefits that way then. And so these are just some different examples. And I want to look at what everybody's posted in the chat box here. Um, I have a fun kind of question for you guys. So what do you guys think is the number one um, most shoplifted item in Italy? So does anyone want to put that in there? <laughs> um, want to take a guess? Olive oil, right? <laughs> nope, it's not olive oil. It's actually not. Number one shoplifted thing. Lemons? Nope. Tomatoes? Nope. Tomatoes are big, though. Look at those everywhere. Feta, getting closer. It's a cheese. Anyone want to guess? Mozzarella, nope, it's Parmesan cheese. It's the number one shoplifted thing. So that's one out of every 10 things that are stolen in Italy is uh, Parmesan cheese. So um, just take that into consideration. So if you're walking around Italy with Parmesan cheese, I guess keep that, you know, maybe keep that under wraps. Okay. So I just, I'm going to quick type in the chat box here. Um, there's a link I'm going to post in there, and that's the link to the survey. So if you would like to do that now, you can just copy and paste it, um, and then you can uh, copy it, I guess, and then when we get off here, you can paste it into your browser, and it should come up the survey. Otherwise, I'll send that out to you later. Um, but I just want to look through the chat box here. Um, and see if there's any questions. Okay, so yeah, we talked about the beans and the overnight, so Maddie about the overnight soaking. So overnight soaking works just um, trying to make sure to take off, rinse the beans um, after you soak them. And it definitely works, it's just that they follow the quick boil method reduces the gas just a little bit more. And hemp seeds definitely have benefits. Uh, flax, they do have, Black seeds have more omega-3s and chia also, but hemp are a good balance and they're a good option also. And so, oh, Deborah says, in Israel they have strudel and chocolate cake on the breakfast buffet. Maybe that's for the Americans. So, you don't, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, and then Zatar, right? Okay, and Alyssa says she makes awesome tacos from pecans and mushrooms. Yeah. I. Um, you can bring those over at any time. So I don't know if anybody has any comments. I would love to hear in the chat box, um, just if you have one minute, just what you could have on your Mediterranean meal tonight. Because I think that's kind of the take home. It's like, how could you actually like apply this, right? So how could you actually make a meal that's made up of half fruits and vegetables and then maybe like a protein and a grain? So does anyone have an idea what they would do for that? Usually I make people, if I, that you're in my class, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys in my class sometime, but 
in person, but I'll make you draw out on a sheet, right? Um, actually draw out what your meal might look like. So if you guys could think about how you could do that. So, so I guess for example, so say you were thinking about grilling out tonight and you were gonna make hamburgers, you know, with um, French fries, and now you're listening to this and you're just not really sure, but maybe you could take that hamburger and you could mix it with some mashed beans. So you have like part bean, part hamburger. You could use a whole grain bun. So you got the grains and the protein and then maybe you could have, you know, some grilled vegetables with that instead. Okay, and so she says like, I make one of those wooden boards with finger food. Yeah, that would be really fun to do. Um, just putting assorted fruits and vegetables and dried fruits and nuts on there, some cheeses. And kebabs are great because you can really, you know, you can have it where it's kind of like some meat, you know, some vegetables, different things like that. So thinking about things like tacos, you know, you can definitely add the beans or different vegetables in place of some of that meat and try to, you know, that's one way to get more of half your meal vegetables. Something like lasagna too, or if you were gonna order takeout pizza tonight, um, there's actually, you can ask for less cheese, um, an extra sauce, which would give you more vegetables. Or when you get home, when you get that pizza home, then you could, um, cook up some vegetables, just steam them quick, or you could do some in the microwave, just kind of um, in a pepper or something like that, and then just throw it on there, add some more peppers right on there. So that could be an option if you're gonna go that route. Or just even, you know, like even something like a lot of people, you know, in the class, I think they start thinking about, you know, very common answer would be something like um, salmon. I think a lot of salmon with some asparagus, and maybe with some um, brown rice then. So something like that can be really good too. And so just, you know, remembering you can definitely season things with lemons and then herbs and spices. So it's not a boring way of eating at all. So I have to uh, tell you guys quick too, you know how you, um, sometimes we go out to eat and we hear about the Greek salad. Um, so if you look at the picture on the left, that is the actual traditional Greek salad. And so that's how they usually make it. They always give you this, it, this one's a mini version, right? And so they'll usually give you a bowl for it, but it's, you know, there's usually no lettuce in the Greek salad. It's kind of funny, but it's usually tomatoes and cucumbers and then a little bit of green pepper and it's sprinkled with oregano. And then they put this hunk of feta cheese on. And so it's just really interesting, you know, how that is. And usually call them out of olives. So I don't like those, you know, I'm still working on my olives. Um, but, um, so I asked for those off, but it does have Kalamata olives on there. So I guess I just wanted to thank everybody and, you know, I'll send out that evaluation and if you can do it, um, you know, I would love feedback because, you know, I think we'll be doing more of these online classes and I just want to, I guess, do the best and hope that you guys could come back again. And then these are some of the classes that I do have coming up online. So I have the slow cooker meal one, which would be really fun. And then the snacking and eating out one. Um, and that will be really good. So if anybody wants to write in the chat box, like I have some handouts that I usually give at the end of the classes and I'll just send a couple of those to you. But if there's something that would be more helpful than something else, I was thinking, you know, usually I'm able to do kind of like a recipe and then give that out to people but maybe I could link to um, some recipe sources if that would be helpful. Um, yeah, so just, I guess, let me know if there's something specific because um, after this, I can definitely, I can save what you chatted. So then I'll have it. Okay, so handouts, recipes. So maybe I'll just send, um, okay, yeah, bean prep tips. Okay, that's a good one. I'll make a note of that. Um, Yeah. Okay. Will there be recipes? That, you know, I will include them because I think that's probably important. Um, I guess I'm going to talk about the how to and then just some examples of, and then we'll definitely yeah, talk about some recipes that would work. That's good. It's kind of like recipes, you know, seem to be important. You know, that's because people just want to, you know, you want to know how to do it. And sometimes you just need something good to start. Okay. So, recipe links. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time, you guys. 
So this is me, and then um, you can always find the latest classes that I do at Eventbrite there. So it's uh, pokefcs.eventbrite.com, and that's where the latest list is always um, happening. So right now I have some in-person classes up there also, so hopefully we'll get to those again. Um, okay, try and true recipes. Yeah, I'll make sure the recipe source I go to if I do that good one so and then ones that I've tried and people like those are the best so okay well I really appreciate you guys and we don't have anything else I'll let you guys go and I really um, hope to see you at the future classes so thank you